Axes and Fire Emblem are some of the best weapons that you can use in a lot of games, but it's easy to forget that axes pretty much sucked in the early part of Fire Emblem's history. Both because it was so long ago, and because many of the titles where axes are dreadful never released in English. So let's have a look at axes throughout the franchise's history, why they used to be rough, and what changed to make them better. But first, a big thank you to my geckos on Patreon, and a shout out to my skinks, Red Mage Morgan, Chicken, Morgwolf, Upscale Furry Trash, Cosplay Sylveon, Emma, Van West, Ike Poo, Lucy Sev, Romeo, Wingman, Lonely Voxel, Aaron Geddon, Micabre, and Stars to Art. I really appreciate all of your support. If you want to support the channel and appear in videos like this, you'll find a link to the Patreon in the video description. Okay, so let's go way back to the beginning. In Fire Emblem 1, we had axes, but frankly not a ton of units that could use them. Only fighters and pirates were able to use axes, and it wouldn't be until later where axes were opened up to generals, paladins, and wyverns. Additionally, none of the classes that can use axes in FE1 promote. This isn't necessarily a deal breaker in FE1, but it's about the worst class situation a weapon can have. Fortunately, we get an axe unit with pretty good stats. Barst has a strength base of 10, a speed base of 9, and a growth of 50% in both stats, so even though he doesn't promote, he gets pretty high in both stats on average. So what's the problem? We've got this unit with really good stats, he joins early, he can use axes, so why aren't they good? Well, in this case, the issue is that the axes themselves are terrible, and the biggest culprit of this is their weight. Remember that in FE1 there's no constitution or build stat, your speed is simply reduced by the weight of whatever weapon you're swinging. An iron axe in FE1 weighs 7 and has 7 might, and the steel axe weighs 9 and has 9 might. Let's compare that to swords. An iron sword weighs 2 and has 5 might, and a steel sword weighs 4 and has 8 might, so we're trading 5 speed for 1 or 2 points of damage. Not to mention that axes are also slightly lower on accuracy compared to swords. But it gets worse. The reason I mentioned just iron and steel axes is because there are no silver axes in FE1, but there sure are silver swords. Those weigh 3 and have 12 might, so they're strictly better than all the one range axes except the devil axe which offers a massive 20 might, but has a chance of backfiring and weighs 14. Not to mention there are about a dozen different swords including killing edges, armor slayers, and leaven swords, while axes are stuck with iron, steel, hand axes, hammers, and devil axes. So swords aren't just better, there's also a bigger variety of them to choose from for specific situations. I've been comparing axes to swords here, but lances are similarly better. In fact, the iron lance has more might, less weight, and the same hit as the iron axe, for example. And it has a better class situation since you can use it on calves and flyers. So, when using axes, you're stuck on these heavy weapons that don't even pay you back with significantly higher might than alternatives. They're so heavy that it's a problem. Barst, our unit with a base speed of 9, is reduced to an effective speed of 2 when holding an iron axe at base. Meanwhile, Agma, who joins at the same chapter with a base speed of 12, gets to enjoy a speed of 10 when using an iron sword, and all Barst gets in exchange is 2 points of might. Even as Barst grows his speed, he will pretty much always struggle to double fast enemies because he'll always be weighed down. So he's limited to fighting slow enemies, and the situation will feel even worse once steel and silver weapons become available, and axes are outpaced by swords that are just better in every way. So in FE1, axes have a bad class situation where there's just a couple that can use them and none of them have any special utility, and none of them promote. And axes are also just worse than the other weapon types in this game, so poor bars. You'll have to wait until FE11 to be good, my friend. I would say that this is the worst axes have ever been, but next up is Gaiden where you get exactly zero axe users. And the hits just keep coming because in FE3 Book 1, axes are very similar in performance to the way they were in FE1. Though they did get a little boost, iron axes have one more might, steel axes have two more might. But they're still super heavy and lack the variety available in other weapon types. But at least the axes that do exist have high might in this game. Unfortunately, axes in Book 2 are even worse because like Gaiden, you do not get any axe users, which is a bummer. Funnily enough, you do get a silver axe from a village in FE3 Book 2, but there's no one that can use it, so the villager just tells you you should sell it. It's essentially a gem. So shockingly enough, in the first three Fire Emblem games, you basically only get axes in one of them, since the part of FE3 where you get axes is a remake of FE1. We do get axes in FE4 though. Like previous games, you're somewhat limited in the amount of classes that can actually use them, 
In Act 1, you get just one unit that can use axes at base, which is Lex, and Axe Cavalier. We do get a few units that can use axes when they promote, though, including Arden, who can use axes when he becomes a general, and Lachesis, who can use axes when she promotes to Master Knight. So we have a few options for axe users, and we can get a couple in Act 2 as well. But are they actually any good in this game? Not really. I think this is at least the first game where they really figured out the identity of axes as a high might weapon with lower hit and weight. In previous games, they weren't that much stronger than swords of the same type, but in FE4 they are. An Iron Sword in FE4 has 6 might, and an Iron Axe has 14. So axes are actually very mighty in this game, but they're also extremely heavy. That same Iron Sword only has a weight of 3, while the axe has a weight of 18. Comparing to lances, lances usually only have a bit less might than axes, but considerably less weight. So a Steel Lance has 2 less might than a Steel Axe, for example, but weighs 6 less. So overall, axes have the highest might, but doubling with an axe except against other axe users is pretty tricky. But some units don't really care about doubling. Lex is our first axe user, and he doesn't have pursuit, so even if he was faster than enemies, he can't double. And most enemies also don't have pursuit, so he doesn't get doubled either. If you can't double, and you don't get doubled, you might as well be using the beefiest weapon available, and that's axes. For units that can double, like Lachesis though, axes feel pretty unappealing, except against other enemies wielding really heavy weapons. So I would not say axes are great in this game, but it's not like FE1 where you actively go out of your way to not use any units that use axes. The class situation is a little bit better here because you can get your axes on a horse, and Lex has meaningful contributions to be making. Plus it's FE4 where you get to deploy all of your units, so you will actually want to use Lex and your other Axe users since they're basically free. I suspect that if there were deployment limits in this game, a lot of people would bench their Axe Bro in Gen 2, but since units are forced, you can find ways to make use of them. The arsenal of Axes is also expanded in this game. We actually have Silver Axes and Brave Axes, though we're still missing future staples like the Killer Axe. But it's still better than being stuck on steel axes for the entire game like we are in FE1. Thracia is up next, and it's our first game with some axe users that I'm actually pretty excited about. Namely, we have Dagdar, an early pre-promoted warrior with fantastic stats who can dominate combat with axes for most of the game. We also have Ocean, who's a bit of an odd unit. He has a follow-up critical modifier of 3 and Wrath, so he crits a lot, and that's great but his big claim to fame is his PRF weapon that he gets in Chapter 1, the Voge. The Voge is a 1-2 range axe with good accuracy, decent might, lightweight, and 30 crit. Basically works like a ranged killer axe and gives OC an excellent 1-2 range combat until it breaks, which is a while because it has 60 uses. And at that point, his stats and skills are enough to carry him the rest of the way. Plus, depending on which route you go in the game, you might get a second one. So we finally have a couple good units to use axes with, and FE5 also made one other change that was very favorable to axes, which is the build stat. The build stat offsets weapon weight, so in previous FE games, if a weapon had a weight of 10, you would lose 10 speed when wielding it. But in Thracia, if you use a 10 weight axe, but you have a build of 6, you only lose 4 speed when you use the axe. Without build in previous games, it could be very difficult to double with axes because you were always weighed down by them by a lot. But in Thracia, units with good build lose little to no speed from axes. Dagdar, for example, can use most axes without losing any speed because he has a build stat of 15. Ocean loses some speed to heavier axes with his build of 11, but not that much, and if he levels up his build a few times, he loses even less. So this game is a lot kinder to axes than previous games, mainly because it provides a way to mitigate weight. But let's also look at the weapons themselves. Axes in Thracia are generally slightly stronger than other weapons but with lower hit and higher weight, but not to the same degree as FE4. In that game, the Iron Axe was heavier and more powerful than the Iron Sword by a huge amount. In FE5, the Iron Axe is just two points stronger than the Iron Sword and two points heavier. Swords are also a bit more accurate, and then the lance sits in the middle. This is pretty much going to be the model for these three weapon types moving forward. So, in theory, you use the swords if you want to be faster, and you use the axes if you want higher might. But the thing about weight in games with build is that if your build is high enough, you don't care about weight. An iron axe weighs 10 in Thracia, which is more than an iron sword, but a lot of units have 10 or more build, so for them, the difference in weight doesn't matter. All that matters is that the axe is stronger by 2, but a little less accurate. 
So for units with decent build, axes are a great weapon type in FE5. However, swords are still the king, but the reason for that is mostly that a bunch of special swords exist that axes and lances can't compare to. Iron, steel, silver, and killer axes all compare fine to their sword compatriots, and the extra might on them is meaningful. But sword users have access to magic swords like the flame sword, status swords like the sleep edge, and utility swords like the kingmaker. So swords are a bit more of an exciting weapon type in this game. This is the first time though that the axe arsenal doesn't feel really thin, as things like the killer axe and pole axe are introduced here. So the variety of axes you have access to isn't as sad in this game as it is in previous games, and it won't be as sad as those games for the rest of the series. Earlier I talked about how some units don't care about the extra weight from axes, but another consideration is that there are also times you don't care about the extra strength from axes. A lot of Thracia enemies are actually pretty wimpy, and it's not too difficult to hit one-rounding thresholds with lances or swords, and if you can one-round an enemy with a sword, it's generally better to do so since they are more accurate. Still, this is the best showing for axes so far in the series, and they feel like a perfectly respectable weapon type in FE5. But I think it's somewhat telling that the only great axe units are a pre-promote with insane stats for his join time, and a unit that gets a lot of his power from a PRF weapon. Still, the worse axe units still feel serviceable in this game, even if they are overshadowed by other units. Serviceable but somewhat overshadowed is a big step up from previous games. Next up we have FE6, and I feel like axes have a reputation for being really bad in this game, but I think they're a little better than people think. Axes largely work in this game the same as they did in Thracia, they're stronger than swords and lances, but heavier and less accurate. But in this game they're less accurate by a considerable margin. In Thracia, an Iron Axe only has 5 less hit than an Iron Sword, in FE6, an Iron Axe has 20 less hit than an Iron Sword. Since FE6 is known for being a game with some shaky hit rates, this can result in axes giving a pretty bad first impression as they can miss a lot. And this is exacerbated by early axe users like Wade and Lot not having great skill bases. But if you slap an axe on a good unit, they can do pretty well with it. Marcus has fine hit rates with axes in the early game, and Percival can do well with them as well, particularly against lance-wielding enemies because the weapon triangle here is stronger than it was in FE5. In that game, attacking with Weapon Triangle Advantage gave you a bonus of 5 hit, in this game it gives you 10. Don't get me wrong, you're still really going to appreciate the reliability that swords offer in FE6, but easily accessible 1-2 range in the form of hand axes is a nice boon for FE6 units with decent skill or quick supports that help their hit rates. I'm not going to say axes are amazing in this game, but I feel like people talk about them like they're unusable, and I don't think that's quite right. Regardless, axes won't really be at their peak until the next couple games. One notable boon for axes in FE6 and the next game is that paladins can use them since they get all three weapon types. And since paladin is one of the best classes in the game and you get at least two really strong paladins every playthrough, you always have access to a unit that can make good use of an axe. FE7 is where axes really start to pop off. Accuracy was increased across the board in this game, so iron axes are up to 75 hit and hand axes are up to 60. So your better units like Marcus or Harkin can start to get consistently good hit rates with them. Enemy quality is also pretty low in this game, so there are lots of situations where you can throw a strong unit into a group of enemies with a hand axe, walk away from your game for a minute or two, and when you come back, enemy phase will be over and everything will be dead. You could do this sometimes in FE6, but not as reliably or frequently in my experience. The only problem with axes in this game is that they give a bit of a bad first impression because some of the first axe users you get are Dorcas and Bartre, who are pretty bad ambassadors for the weapon type. Axes have higher hit rates in this game, but not so high that you can get by without any skill. This isn't a problem for Marcus, who starts out with 15, but for Bartre, who starts out with 5, you're going to be looking at high 60s, low 70 hit rates a lot. Plus, Dorcas and Bartre are slow, so they don't double much, and I think sometimes people attribute that to their weapon type, when actually it's just because their speed's not very good. So, I think a lot of people experience Dorcas and Bartre and decide they don't like axes, but when you get axes on a good unit, like Marcus, Hawkeye, or Raven, you'll be cooking. High might and easy access to reliable 1-2 range makes them one of the strongest weapon types in FE7, you could also make an argument for lances being the strongest weapon type since they bring javelins to the table for 1-2 range, and those can be used by flyers. This is basically the story of axes for the next few games. A good unit with a hand axe can do a lot of sweeping. 
Whether axes are the best weapon type or not largely depends on what weapon types the best units can use. For example, in FE8, I would say the best weapon type is lances because paladins get lances but not axes, and Seth is by far the best character in the game. So lances are more important to your success than axes are in that game. But regardless of whether you think axes or lances are better, they're fantastic in both 7 and 8, as well as Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn. Though in Radiant Dawn, it's a bit harder to hand axe sweep through maps like you can in 7 through 9, as a lot of player units don't dominate enemies like they did in 7 through 9, but you do still get some really strong axe units that can do so at different points in the game. These games basically show that whenever you have access to a unit that is or can become a lot more powerful than the enemy units to the point that they don't need a lot of extra might to one round, access to 1-2 range is going to be really valuable, and when axes can provide that, they're going to feel pretty good. These games are also a lot kinder to axes class-wise. In early Fire Emblem games, there weren't many classes that could even use axes, but in these games you have great options like Berserker, Paladin in 6, 7, 9, and 10, and Wyverns in 9 and 10. Having good class access is a great boon for a weapon type. Even Great Knight is a respectable class in 8 where someone like Dusel can be popping off with an axe. Because no matter how good the weapon type is, if no good classes can use it, it's going to be hard for them to be really effective. The next game where weapons feel pretty different is in DSFE, and I'm mostly going to be talking about Shadow Dragon here because it's the game I'm more familiar with of the two. I think similar principles apply to 12 at lower difficulties, but I'm sure Lunatic Reverse changes things and it's probably the game I have the least experience with in the franchise. So if you're a 12 expert, let me know in the comments how the weapon type dynamic plays out in that game. In Shadow Dragon though, it's all about effective weaponry. In Shadow Dragon, there's a forging system that lets you increase the might of your weapons, which is fantastic for effective weaponry because you face tons of horses and armors throughout a playthrough, and every point of might you forge onto an effective weapon is tripled against those enemies. The gold standard weapons for forging are therefore the Rider's Bane for dealing with Cavaliers and the Wing Spear for dealing with both Cavaliers and Armor Knights. So Lances are a great weapon type in this game. But axes have good forging options as well in the form of the hammer, which makes axe units a fine answer to armor knights, and the pole axe for dealing with cavaliers. Swords just have the armor slayer and the worm slayer if we don't count Marth's PRF rapier, so I prefer the axe suite of effective weaponry to the sword suite. Outside of effective weapons, axes also just perform generically well in this game. There is a weight system, but it's offset by strength, so your long-term combat units won't have to worry about being weighed down for most of the game and I appreciate the higher might and 1-2 range you can get access to with axes. Though enemies in this game are usually too tough to just sweep with hand axes on higher difficulties, so there's still 1-2 range utility, but it's not as strong as something like Fire Emblem 7 or 8 where you could just hand axe your way through entire maps. So in Shadow Dragon, axes, totally respectable weapon type, pretty good. Next up we have Awakening, which doesn't have anything crazy going on weapon-wise. Axes are a bit stronger and a bit less accurate than the competition, but Forging lets you fix any hit problems you may have without too much difficulty. With no weight and decent accuracy, Hand Axes provide solid 1-2 range, though their might is pretty pitiful. So if you want to kill enemies with them, you'll have to slap them on a strong unit or forge them. Axes are available on lots of good classes in the game, perhaps most notably Frederick's Great Knight class has axes, which means you have access to at least one fantastic axe unit for the entire game as long as you don't reclass him. There is no weapon weight in Awakening, so as long as you have a unit that can deal with the lower accuracy, which isn't too difficult to manage, axes are a great way to go. Though they don't feel overwhelmingly stronger than other weapon types to me, they are generally my preference. Fates feels pretty similar in this regard, with axes being stronger for units that don't have hit issues. In Conquest, axes feel particularly good since you get Camilla, one of the best units in the series, who will absolutely dominate with axes for the entire game. In Birthright, axes don't give quite as good of an impression since you don't really get a standout axe unit until later into the game unless you reclass someone. Forging also exists in Fates, though it's a little more awkward since you need to use Fates' as a resource system to get forging materials, which can be tricky without online play. But we do have the technology to just hack the resources in ourselves, which is generally what I do when I play Fates these days. Hand axes in Fates got a big nerf alongside with javelins as they just can't double in this game. So they can still be useful for occasional chip, but it's a big downgrade. 
I would say I prefer axes to swords and lances in Fates, particularly if we aren't taking into account some of the strong PRF swords that aren't available to most units like the Yato and Siegfried. So axes feel pretty good in this game, but it doesn't really feel like there's a huge disparity between axes, lances, and swords, which is cool. After Fates, we have three houses where axes are pretty good generically for the same reason they are in previous games which is that they have good might. Although their accuracy and weight can be a bit of an issue early in maddening mode before you have a chance to ramp your units up. But three houses is about a lot more than just the generic stats of weapons because we also have access to weapon-specific combat arts. Axe combat arts don't excite me too much. Most of the axe combat arts add might and accuracy, which is great, but when we compare it to something like lances, where there's combat arts like swift strikes that make you attack twice before the enemy, often resulting in a one-shot, or Vengeance, which can add so much might to your attack that you one-shot the enemy. The axe combat arts just don't stack up quite as well. There is one exception, which is Raging Storm, and that's an Edelgard-specific combat art that adds 14 might and lets her take another turn after attacking. This is probably the best combat art in the game, and it contributes to Edelgard being my pick for the best unit in the game. However, every other unit does not have access to this combat art, so it feels weird to say that axes are good because one unit that you have access to in one route gets a sick combat art with them. So axe combat arts aren't bad, but they lack access to the really good combat arts you can get from lances or bows. Still, they have good might, and the combat arts can help you get around accuracy issues or put in some heavy chip, particularly in the early game when your units are at their weakest. I think they're firmly above swords, which also don't have great combat arts or stats in comparison. So axes are solid in this game, but I have them under lances since lances get some really exciting combat arts that axes don't. Lastly, we have engage, and axes are fantastic in engage. As is tradition, axes are powerful but less accurate and heavy in comparison to other weapon types. Accuracy is very fixable and engaged through engraves, skills, and supports, so the lower hit rate of axes isn't a huge deal and a lot of units have enough build to manage the weight from axes or are fast enough to deal with the weight penalty given a little help through skills and emblem rings. So accuracy and weight are pretty manageable. But one rounding thresholds for physical weapons can be pretty high in engage, so you really appreciate the extra might that you can get out of axes. Additionally, some of the best classes in the game have axe access. For warriors, it's their only non-bow weapon, and it's the best choice for most wyvern riders. Plus, there are other solid classes like Great Knight and Bow Knight that can have access to axes as well. So, axes are available to most of your physical units, offer great might, and most of the good units can work around any issues presented by axe accuracy and weight by just slapping an engrave on their axe of choice. For example, Panette can slap a Lin emblem on her killer axe, and now it crits more and she doesn't have accuracy issues. Not every engrave is as good as that one, but there are six engraves that help with hit, and every support helps as well. Even though axes are pretty sick in this game, this is actually the first game in a while where I would say that swords have the better readily available 1-2 range compared to axes. Hand axes are pretty low might in this game, while sword users have access to the Levin sword in the mid game, which is lighter and more powerful than the hand axe while hitting on resistance, which tends to be lower than defense. And they're very easy to come by once you get to the mid game. Only problem is you would really like your sword user to have a decent magic stat if they're going to use the Levin sword. Still, for your physical combat units, axes are the king in this game. If you want a unit to one round or one shot with a physical weapon, you're probably going to want to hand them an axe. So, axes have come a long way from being trash in the first game and non-existent in the second game to becoming usually the best or second best physical weapon in the last several games. Looking at all the games in the franchise, I think the most notable takeaways are that axes really benefit from games that either remove or reduce the impact of weapon weight. Axes also really benefit from games where enemies are weak enough to be mowed down at 1-2 range. And lastly, axes really benefit when enemies are bulky enough that the might from axes matters compared to using the more accurate javelins or swords. When weight is super relevant, like in FE1 and 3, it's hard for axe users to double, and in games where hit rates are bad, like FE6, it can be difficult for units that aren't great to get reliable hit rates with axes. But in any game where you can get around those two issues, like Engage, where build offsets weight, speed can be pumped, and accuracy is easily improved, the higher might of axes carries them to being a very solid weapon in the game. On paper, the dynamic between weapons hasn't actually changed a ton since FE5, Axes are always a little stronger than swords and a little less accurate. So the factors that make one weapon better than the other tends to be the way that the game works, such as what classes are good and what weapons they can use, whether weight exists and can be offset, 
what tools exist for fixing accuracy and how high one rounding thresholds are. And then of course, game specific features like combat arts can have a big impact on what weapons excel the most as well. So that's axes from FE1 to today. Which iteration of them is your favorite and why? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And if you liked the video and you want to see more content like it, consider hitting the like or subscribe button so that you never miss an upload. If you want to chat about Fire Emblem more, check out the community discord linked in the video description. Either way, thanks for hanging out and have yourself a lovely week.